father doesn't believe in slam poetry. He says it's like slamming the door on cultural integrity, so I'm trying to show him what I see. We're saying the same things that have been said for centuries. Nature is beautiful, darling. You're wonderful. Thank God for God. I want my daughter to feel beautiful, and I want my son to be a man, and I want their lives to be better than mine. And Daddy, I know you know how that feels. Our language is just as real, just a little more tangible to minds that don't speak like Shakespeare. Minds that see Chaucer's Miller and the promises that lay broken at their feet. And the pilgrim's progress in a single mother whose ex-lover was less man than the three-year-old she holds in her arms, due north of her heart as she starts down the road to independence so that she can give him a better future. Because her hope is stronger than her fear, Daddy. I want to take this road to all the places that you're too afraid to let me go. Though my fear is weaker than my hope, never let me go. Just let me take all the life that I can find and share it with you because sometimes you're boring. <laughs> and why shouldn't I come back to tell you where they make balloons in words that remind me of the color blue as it rose above trash tree branches in the backyard on Mars Street? I miss V8, classic rock and string cheese. I can see them fading into a man that I don't understand. A man whose admirable traits I can appreciate, but who doesn't appreciate that I have dreams too. Dreams to do things like bend words and drop beats. He wants to know how I can stand to insult Blake and Dickinson and Byron with my profanities. I want to know when it became profane to grab someone's wandering train of thought and drag them by their heartstrings to the precipice of your perspective because what you see is beautiful. He says it's arrogant for anyone to call themselves an artist, a poet, that such distinction is a gift of those gifted and articulate interpretation of humanity, and maybe he's right. But my father has never seen a man spit words like watermelon seeds and wanted to pick them off the ground because they still sound sweet. I want, in the way that Billy Collins' cigarette smoke finger painted on the sky outside his hotel window some random January in Paris, to touch and color the world I want to dip my calloused hands into life and lick the gooey chocolate from between my ink-stained fingers because my stage is the coffee shop where Dunn beats Aristophanes for bagels before work on Mondays. And when judgment slams his gold gavel soul first on my father's desk, I want him to know that a wordy verdict is not a guilty one. Woo!